Welcome to SML Total Access, where we break down news, predictions, and more in our Madden League. Now, let's get fired up for SML football. Hello and welcome back to SML Total Access. I am Primetime Triple Zero, joined by Matt and Dan. What is going on, fellas? What's up, guys? Not much. Enjoying a nice lazy Saturday. Hey, it's always good. Uh, it's, it's a weekend and you know it's SML Total Access time. And let's start off first down. Uh, this has kind of been debated in um, chat the last couple of weeks, especially really all time. I feel like this has always kind of gotten brought up in, in different leagues. And um, especially right now, it seems like this game with how running is shotgun runs inside zones a lot, but shotgun runs in general. What's your guys' thoughts on shotgun runs slash inside zones? Are they excessive? Do people need to do them less? Do you have a rule suggestion? What's your guys' thoughts on that? I'm just going to throw it out there, and we'll start with Matt. Yeah, I do think there's some excessiveness going on. I think in my opinion, though, I wouldn't use the word excessive, but it, and I mentioned this in my stream, just it just came off my tongue. It, it feels like every game is the same. Um, no matter who you play, it feels like you're playing the same person because 90% of the league is shotgun inside zone. If they go under center, they run a stretch. Then they go back to shotgun inside zone. If it's third and one, fourth and one, it's trips inside zone. Uh, that's my issue with it is it's gotten to the point, and I don't remember this being a thing two years ago and before in Madden where everybody ran from the shotgun. It seems like it creeped up last cycle, uh, unless my memory is just terrible. Um, or maybe the EA's run defense has just gotten worse and it's more noticeable, but uh, that's my issue. It's just like every game I play, it's like, hey, I just played you last week, but I didn't. Uh, I think that's where, that's where my issue is. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I got a lot of different thoughts on it. One is, is um, I, I like to separate shotgun runs from inside zones or also make a plug to let people know that if you run a QB option and you hand it off, that's an inside zone. Okay, same blocking. Same thing, so don't try to act like you're calling a different play. There's a lot of different options. There's outside zones now. There's traps. There's powers. There's counters. Uh, there's base. There's a lot of different uh, shotgun runs. So uh, it really depends on if someone is, I think, abusing one shotgun run more so than others. The problem what Matt kind of highlighted a little bit is the under center stuff. EA has just dumbed down a lot of the passing options on under center plays. And so, therefore, when someone sees someone under center, it's almost like an automatic cover zero blitz that the defense runs. And so now you're looking at it like, well, why would I want to run against an eight-man front or <laughs> a cover zero blitz every time? Uh, I have no option up the middle, so I got to go outside. So uh, I think it's a combination of the offense and the defense uh, and EA not giving you a lot of good passing options. Uh, now, I will say single back, I believe, is coming back uh, this cycle. So that might help a little bit. But uh, you run anything else under center like that, you are going to get cover zero blitzed. And that's probably a combination of this problem as well that needs to be looked at. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, for me, um, by the way, Dan, just curious. When you say that, I, I know what you mean about the QB option. Now, if a guy has, like I have Anthony Richardson, who's a scrambling quarterback, or you yeah. play Jalen Hurts. And if that person run like if, if they're apt to go running with their quarterback, would you still consider it an inside zone or are you more no, of like No, 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 not at all. No, that's <clears> a totally different play. Yeah. But but if you hand it off, if you look at the blocking scheme, it's the exact same as the inside zone. Yeah. So yeah. the guys that are out there trying to say, Well, I only ran five inside zones and three QB options, but you hand it off three times. That to me that's eight side that's eight inside runs. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that makes inside sense. Yep. Yeah. For me, I I think there there's the shotgun run thing is a little overblown. Um, like to Dan's point, halfback base, there's sweeps, there's counters, there's outside zones. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff you can do out of shotgun. Um, and I know Matt had said he, he thinks it kind of popped up last year. I do think the whole sh inside zone thing has gone on for the last five years. Um, the, the thing is running is back this Madden. It's, it's not quite what it was. What was it? Two, three Maddens ago, but it, it's close. Uh, and because of that, I think we do notice it more. Uh, another thing is um, that's kind of a peeve of mine is, is sometimes we we have preconceived notions of people 
um, that they're going to do something. And, and, and if, especially if they do it once or twice, then we get angry because, you know, for example, I'll, I'll just, you know, probably three, four Maddens ago, I ran inside zone a lot, you know, probably more than I should have. And I, I feel like I've dialed it back to where it's at, like, it's not a big part of my offense. And you guys, by all means, I, if you want to cut me off and say prime, you're lying, please cut me off. But like, I feel like inside zone is not a large part of my offense anymore, but I still hear that now. Like, oh yeah, prime prime runs a lot of inside zone. So it's like, if if you do if you do something at some point, you're gonna have to work hard to to kind of rip that narrative from your back, even even if you know even if you don't really do it anymore. So that's something to be cognizant about if you're a player who who kind of used to be to have a heavy tendency of doing it. Like you should probably do it even less because people are going to ex- kind of expect it from you and it's going to cause issues. I just think it, it goes back to let's the, try to be try to be a, a guy who mixes up your offense. Try not to take advantage uh, of a player. Um, and if you think you're towing the line on it, then you probably should have done it two, three less times already. <laughs> like, you know, um, but, but overall, um, we're, it's something we're monitoring. It, it's a tough thing to monitor, obviously, because you can't just look at the box score and, and it doesn't say how many runs are out of the shotgun or in this case, inside zone. Uh, so, so it is tough. And, and it's obviously something that's, I feel like been a, a topic of discussion for a long time. And uh, every Madden, it seems like there's a new thing to talk about. Last year's kick returns. This year's inside zones and, and shotgun runs. But um, moving on, second down, who makes the playoffs in the NFC? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of tight races there. And uh, uh, Dan, we'll start with you. Yeah, I, I think, again, uh, you know, I kind of joked about it early on when you guys mentioned this title because uh, I thought, well, it's already set, but it's not. We're looking at it. Uh, there's 10 teams that are legit there. You look at, uh, let's just say the wild cards for right now, Biz. Um, AJ uh, meets Matt Colt, who's playing really well lately, and uh, Dom. So uh, all those, what is that, six teams uh, for three spots are one game, one and a half maybe at the, with a the tie there for Biz. So it's going to get exciting. And, and uh, if I had to pick right now, I'm going to I'm going to trust the guys that have been there, Dom and Matt, uh, and then uh, I'm going to kind of trust either Meets or Biz. So those are my four. I think are in. I think. I think Colt's going to be out. I think AJ might be out, but um, I'm going to go Dom, Matt, uh, and then I'll just pick Meats since he just played me tough. Matt? Yeah, I I actually think one through six is set. I think it's I think Bomber, Woods, Straw, Doink, Biz. Biz has a really mm-hmm. easy schedule, and that team is really freaking good. Uh, and AJ, I think those are all set. So I think it comes down to probably Meats, me, and Dom. And I think it's going to be Dom. Um, you know, he wouldn't be in this position if he wouldn't have gone on vacation. And he plays me and meets, I think, for the last two games of his season. I think he's going to win both of those games, which will propel him above. Uh, meets apparently can just lose to anybody or beat anybody. But I think Dom sneaks into the seven and then one through six uh, stay exactly as they are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, looking at it, <coughs> excuse me, for me, um, <clears throat> Dom and Matt, are two guys that I, I just dread playing uh, because they, they make me think. And I think they make other people think when they play as well. And, and I just think they'll find a way to get in the playoffs. I do. Dom's lost six of his last seven. He was, he was away for a while. Um, he, but, but he does have meets and Matt on his schedule week uh, 17 and 18. So that, that'll be interesting how that kind of plays out. But I just don't. I don't count either of those two guys out. I think it'll be Dom, Matt, and Meats. I think Biz uh, doesn't quite make it, uh, and and it's just three guys who who always tend to find a way to make the playoffs. And and that's no shot at Biz, who's having a good season, and, and he's kind of turning things around there. And hats off to him for that. But I'm gonna go with the classics: Dom, Matt, and Meats. Um, third down. <clears throat> we we've kind of heard we've seen this happen a few times in in different games. Just Madden players, and we're talking just you know, the actual virtual guys dominating and, and causing, you know, somebody to win or lose a game. Who's the most dominant Madden 24 player that you guys have seen so far? And, and Matt, we'll start with you. Yeah. And of course we're talking about actual on the field players, not the owners. Yeah. Um, for, for me, I'm just going to pick one on each side of the ball. And maybe this is because I play him so much, but I'm going to go with Aaron Donald. Um, this guy, it, and really it's any elite defensive tackle. I know we were chatting in your game against KJ prime with, Quinn and Williams just single-handedly yeah. wrecking your soul. Um, you don't, but one thing I want to stress is, well, you know, I say Aaron Donald and people say, well, he's only got like four or five sacks. Well, 
don't look at the sacks as the number. There's a lot of trigger happy people in this league when it comes to passing. They snap it, they throw it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's look at the pressures. Watch when you're watching the streams, watch guys like Donald and Quinn and Williams and Kenny Clark. Watch them during the play and look at the pressure that they put on the quarterback. When you make a bad throw, you think, ah, oh, my quarterback sucks. But if you go back and watch, watch that defensive tackle that was probably in his face. Yeah. This happens to me all the time. And that's what caused it. Aaron Donald, I've ran away from the guy. I've doubled him and ran away from him. He catches me from behind. He's just an absolute freak. And then on the offensive side of the ball, it's Joe Burrow. Um, I mean, this guy has everything that you would want in a Madden quarterback and player. Look at this. He's got set feet lead. We've talked about that. So his throw power doesn't matter. Inside dead eye. Perfect accuracy on all throws inside the numbers. Sideline de dead eye. Perfect accuracy on all throws outside the numbers. So he's got perfect throws inside and outside the numbers. I don't think there's anywhere else you can throw the ball. Fearless. He's immune to throw penalties caused by defensive pressure while his feet are set. We just talked about Aaron Donald getting in the face. Joe Burrow doesn't care. And then he's got run and gun. If his X factor is lit up, if he's on the run, it's a perfect throw. That's I can't crazy. think if you were if you created a player in Madden and you handpicked their abilities, I think you would give them all of Joe Burrow's. That's awesome. Yeah, that that would be a good one if it was Madden twenty three, but it's Madden twenty four, and so it's got to be a running back. Uh, the best running backs in the game right now. You look at Jonathan Taylor. You've got uh, Pacheco. You but you look at um, even uh, Pollard there for for the Cowboys. One of those three guys. I mean, they are just they touch the ball. And you kind of hold your breath. You, you hold your breath that they don't duke out half your guys. They don't break a tackle. They just don't run past your guys. All three of those guys are just game changers on the offensive side that you have to be worried about. Even like third and ten, uh, you're you're thinking, "Crap! If if I run a pass commit here, and, and they get past my defensive line, they're gonna they're gonna house this." Uh, so I I think the running back position. I think it's the guys that have elite speed. Uh, but somehow they still break tackles. Those are the guys that that I'm scared to death of. Uh, on the defensive side. I'm kind of with you, Matt. Uh, I think it's got to be guys with inside stuff or guys with uh, some kind of outsiders uh, uh, edge threat. I don't see anybody in the secondary that's really <laughs> fearful or I'm afraid of. I don't see acrobat. I don't see anything those like that really uh, that is laid up. But to me, it's Miles Garrett, uh, kind of my Aaron Donald of, of my division. I mean, you can't run at the guy. You can't run away from the guy. Uh, he is just a train wreck uh, in the backfield, and and he I he he's annoying to play and tough to play. So uh, th those would be the guys that I would go after. Yeah, for me, I agree. Running back position, take your pick, Pacheco, Taylor, whoever. Um, but the most dominant player I faced, um, Aaron Donald, by far. I watched, I commentated the NFC Championship game. Obviously, I was going to play the winner in the Super Bowl, and Aaron Donald single handedly willed straw blacks to win that game i mean if you go back and watch that game i think i uploaded it or it's on our twitch at the very least i mean there there was so many missed passes from dom's quarterback caused by aaron donald there was a fourth uh it was like three minutes left in the game donald caused a strip sack that uh, straw blacks picked it up i mean there was so many moments in that game so game plan wise i watched that game and i'm like you know what I don't usually do this, but I moved Quentin Nelson, my left guard. I put him at right guard because I'm like, I want to neutralize Aaron Donald for the Super Bowl. I kind of slowed him down. There was a point in the game, third quarter. I hadn't ran it at Aaron Donald at all, all game. I'm like, I'm going to run it to Aaron Donald's side here. Lost three yards. Never did it for the rest of the game. I mean, the guy literally, I, I've never game planned really around a defensive player. I did for the Super Bowl. And yeah, he literally had me scared. Literally. <clears throat> Great player. Um, and Straw does uses him well, and his user is good, and, and he obviously works off of that well. Um, fourth down, let's share our love on people. Uh, Dan, uh, who are you spreading your love all over? Yeah, I want to I want to spread a guy that um, <laughs> uh, just kind of woke up uh, a little bit of maybe the the echoes here this uh, this <gasps> morning, and I'm going to go to Dump. Wow, uh, who you know was kind of called out on a show recently, saying he was only the sixth or seventh best player in the AFC, and then he goes out and just just smacks doink i mean just destroys them 41 nothing uh in the in the uh, you know nfc and and doink you know doink just beat qp so uh doink's not a pushover by any means and so you know hey dump uh good job man i'm, I'm watching you uh, i know we got a matchup coming up soon and uh you know division kind of on the line so uh congratulations on that big win and uh i'm not calling you sixth or seventh best in the afc wow that's good yeah, I'm going to go with uh, with Woods. Um, yes. I talked about Woods last time we were on this show, and 
Um, I said he's my next big thing, and since then, uh, well, <clears throat> I think it's been since then we advanced so stinking fast. He's won five in a row. Uh, he <laughs> does have a win over Doink, who just had a huge win today. Um, and he's beat his last three games have been wins over his NFC East divisional opponents, which have kind of separated him from the pack there. Uh, his most recent win over um, Meats, but he's got he's got RD, um, and he's got he's still got Polly. He's got Dan to end the season, so he does not have an easy schedule, but he's playing well and. Um, you know what? It's nice to see Woods. He's sitting in the two seat. I don't think a lot of people would probably know that yes. just off the rip, but uh, the old man is, he's fighting. I love Woods. I respect Woods. Um, one person I'm going to spread open is, um, um, or spread over is um, gotta be, gotta be Mr. Harvey Dent for all those Batman fans out there. Um, double rice, no bean. You know, I, I, I didn't know what to expect from bean this season. 800 hours. Watch his streams, this, this, and this. Loses to Monty, loses to Straw, loses to Prime, loses to Dan. Bean's done, right? No. Win, QP. Win, Bomber. Win, RD. That is impressive. And he's got a Patriots team, which isn't super talented. I mean, he's got some pieces. Um, he, Watson's not great, but he's developed Stevenson. He's uh, developing his receivers nicely. Um, Bean is winning some big games and that makes, uh, that makes, I'm impressed. So moving on to the extra point, uh, Matt, what's your five? Yeah. You know, my share of the love was going to be the NFC, but <laughs> I looked at my top five and thought ah, that might just be a hip, little bit, uh, hypocritical there because I've only got one NFC person on my top five and that's bomber and he's hanging oh. at the very bottom. Uh, bombers there. I mean, Hey, he's 10 and three. He's, he's still around. We had a little bit of a hiccup there in the middle. Um, you mentioned that he, you know, he uh, he lost to uh, Bean, um, but his other losses are to Prime and to Meats. I, I don't necessarily hold those against him too much. And they've really been close losses for the most part, uh, one or two scores. Uh, so I got Bomber there. At number four, this is a little unfair because he has played his game before this show. It's QP. Um, I was all set to apologize to QP because I said he doesn't fear any, he doesn't strike fear in anybody. And then he played me and absolutely destroyed me. Um, he strikes fear in me, but uh, apparently not anybody else because he's on a little bit of a skid. But hey, QP's he lives for the playoffs. He the regular season, regular schmeezing, right? He doesn't really care. At number three, I've got Clink. Uh, speaking of guys that have recently beat QP, uh, he's a quiet ten and two. Um, he was in the driver's seat for the one seat. It might still be. Um, I haven't checked his remaining schedule, but he's playing really well. And again, it's one of those things where Pacheco is the man, but you can't you can't focus on him like you can you know, like Tony Pollard, where you have to, you know, make Trey Lance beat you because Mahomes will and can. At number two, I've got Prime. Uh, again, you're sitting at the one seat according to Neon, 11 and two. I mean, it, it's it's as, as consistent as a sunrise. It's Prime is really, really good. Go figure. But at number one, I've got Dan. I mean, I, you guys have the same exact record and Dan won. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I got to I gotta give the nod to Dan and he's playing really impressive. His only two losses were his first two games of the season against, again, Dump and the most dominant player in Madden, in my opinion. And then the aforementioned Clink. He hasn't lost a game since then. So Yeah. No, I think I think that list is right. And kind of funny because I think last Matt 5, Dan and I were off the list. Um, and, and we both knew <laughs> we both knew we had to turn it on. Uh, and I think we did. So I, I, that's a good list. Good job, Matt. I, I, I agree that it's fair and – uh, you, you picked the right group and good job. Um, guys, that's SML total access for the day. Uh, we got a strong playoff push here for the last, what is a quarter of the season or something? Um, good luck to everybody who's fighting. Uh, good luck to me. Who's trying to get number one seed. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed and let us know, you know, if you have any topic ideas or anybody you got your eye on, uh, go ahead and comment below. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.